Beer Lambert's law basically says that the intensity of the transmitted light through a cuvette of known dimensions containing a solution with a known concentration of solute is dependent on multiple factors which includes the length traveled, the concentration of the solute. So this is also written as incident, um, say you take I as a light. So this is the incident light. The incident light is equal to the transmitted light used uh, raised to a negative exponential of concentration of the solute into the distance traveled. This is D. Inside this will be concentration into E. E is basically a constant which is called as extinction coefficient which is different for different substances depending upon the amount of light they have a tendency to absorb. So basically you are seeing how much of the incident light is transmitted through the cuvette and how much would be the transmitted light and based on the amount of light absorbed you are going to calculate the concentration of solute. So now when it comes to pulse oximetry what are we bothered about? We are bothered about oxygenated hemoglobin and reduced hemoglobin. For this we use two waveforms 660 nanometers and 940 nanometers. Now how do you remember this? 660 nanometers. 6 sounds like sexy color. So 6. Sexy 6 means red. So 660 nanometers is for red light. Okay. Or red light. So red light is for RR. So it's for reduced hemoglobin. So 660 nanometers reduced hemoglobin absorbs more. 940 nanometers is going to be for infrared light. Infrared light is for oxygenated hemoglobin. So based on these two factors, how much of this uh, two wavelengths are absorbed, a value will be obtained using alternating current and direct current. This is because alternating current will be the pulsatile arterial waveform and direct current will be the non-pulsatile part of the tissues and a ratio called the modulation ratio will be obtained. That is AC 660 by DC 660. I don't think you need this much for your level because in pediatrics I don't think you need it but I am just mentioning. This modulation ratio will then be translated to the amount of saturation. So this is a basic idea of how the pulse oximetry functions. Now what are the advantages of pulse oximetry? No, what are the parts I'll go? Parts of a pulse oximetry, the probe which contains what? It contains basically the LED which gives off the light of two different waveforms and the photo detector that will uh, absorb the uh, transmitted light. Then it has a cable which connects the probe to the console and the console is the one who is going to see the transmitted light converted to an electrical signal, get the modulations ratio and thus determine the saturation of the hemoglobin. Then uh, whenever you use in pediatric population, it's important that you attach the probe to the neonate and then only connect the cable to the console because otherwise you're going to introduce artifacts. Now, advantages is that it is inexpensive, it is non-invasive, it is a continuous measurement, you'll get heart rate and other values from it like pulse-to-pulse -pulse pressure variations and then it's portable. It's easily available. It can be used for screening for congenital heart diseases as well as it's got tone modulation. So these are the various advantages. Now what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages is that first thing motion artifacts. If the patient child moves and all is going to be difficult. Electrical interference or noise interference is a possibility. Then if the patient has a pigmented skin, nail polish, dyes, etc., it's going to be a problem. If the patient has dyshemoglobinemia, it's going to be a problem. That is methemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, etc. Then one more problem that can be there is if the patient, uh, dyshemoglobinemia, I told you, nail color, I told you, electrical. Um, yeah, if the patient uh, moves his fingers, it's going to be a problem. If the patient has poor perfusion, it's going to be a problem. Next, we go to the sites where you can apply this. Sites, most commonly in adults, we use fingers and toes. You can even use the ear. For kids, we pediatric population, we use it. We can use the nose. We can use the tongue. And then we use the foot and the wrist for neonates because their fingers and all are so small. Next, we have to move on to the types. Types, there's transmission type. Transmission pulse oximetry where the incident light is detected. Like there's a 
uh, what do you say, a LED here and the photo detectors on the opposite side, like in a finger, the photo detectors on the opposite side, this transmission type. The other one is the reflectance pulse oximetry. In the reflectance pulse oximetry, the light emitting diode and the photo detector on the same side. So like say you put it on the forehead, say this is a forehead, the light is transmitted, the reflected light is detected. So this brings us to the end of the class on pulse oximetry. Have a nice day.